the presence of the Lord, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Such peace. Yeah. So welcome to Dwell AJC. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Dwell is actually an acronym that stands for Discipleship, Worship, Evangelism, Leadership, and Love. We disciple worshipers to evangelize leaders in love. The AJC part is actually a Jesus community. And uh, that's really important to us because when the Lord called us to start a church, uh, we were just going to kind of do the conventional route, you know, go rent a building somewhere and get as many people in there as possible to pay the rent and, you know, put it on a nice show every su Sunday morning. But then the Lord said, stop. That's not what I want. I want you guys to be a house church. He actually told us, house church. So it's like, okay, so this is different than what we thought we were going to do. Uh, but it is important because now I realize that a true church, and remember, the true, uh, the, the Greek word for church in the Bible is actually ecclesia, right? Which is the called out assembly. For an assembly to take place, we really need to have relationships, okay? I'm sure we've all had that uh, feeling of going to a church with thousands of people, but feeling totally alone, right? That's not God's idea of the Ecclesia, okay? The Ecclesia is about relationships and uh, forming those bonds, you know, because we are the living stones and the mortar, you know, that holds everything in place is the Holy Spirit. But if you never have a chance to even get together, right, in, in smaller groups where you can get to know each other, that bond never happens. So we're actually ineffective as the Ecclesia. So that's why I think he's called us to be a house church, because this is the best way to have intimate relationship, because it's all about doing life together. Okay? So we are also called to be a micro church in the government mountain. So this is kind of a new concept, because when you think of a micro church, it, well, it's, it's purposefully small. Because, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've ever gone through the math, but a human person can really only have good relationships with about 144 connections, which happens to be 12 people. It just works out that way, right? So when the Lord put together his group of disciples, he knew exactly what he was doing, right? So it's important to have smaller groups so you can have true, real, uh, uh, authentic relationships. You know, not just kind of the superficial, hey, how's it going? Yeah, things are great. Okay, see you next week. What is that? Right? So that's what we're all about. Okay? And a microchurch is this idea. Remember when Daniel was working for Nebuchadnezzar, right? By the way, that was in the government mountain, right? He was actually one of Nebuchadnezzar's advisors, matter of fact, top guy, right? He also had his uh, Hebrew boys, right? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Guess what? That is the microchurch. Because whenever, you know, Daniel had to have some kind of really important uh, decision to make or advice to give, he would go back to the, the Hebrew boys and they would come together and pray and ask for God's direction. Why was Daniel so successful? I mean, I'm sure he's a smart guy, but I believe it's because he was always doing what God was telling him to do. Of course, God is the God of the universe. He knows exactly what needs to, needs to be done. So I think that's part of it, all right? So anyways, we're called to be the modern Daniel and the Hebrew boys, okay? In the government mountain. And that's why we're all here, because we all have that part of us that wants to be engaged in the public square, right? And we understand the importance of it. And that's why we're gathered together. See that make, make sense? Now, there are other mountains. You know, has it, who hasn't heard of the seven mountains? Anyone? Seven mountains? Okay. So seven mountains is actually a relatively new concept, but it's actually as old as the Bible, because it's actually in there. The, the seven mountains are this, is this idea that there are spheres of influence. The number one sphere of influence is actually family, right? But then after that is church, the ecclesia. Then outside of that is uh, government, then education, 
then we have business, then there's arts and entertainment, and then finally we have supposedly the media, which is supposed to keep all of our people truthful, right? They're supposed to be accountable. Well, of course, that's no longer, you know, except if you're on X. X is for you, you know, you get the, the full scoop on X. Okay, but those are the seven mountains, all right? So right now, we're called to be in the government mountain because our goal is to train up as many godly people as possible to get seated in the gates of influence, right? What we're celebrating tonight is God's doing. He has put Dr. Monica into that seat of influence at the top of the mountain, at least in Henderson, right? But that's where we start, right? We start local, work our way up, right? Praise the Lord, right? So that's what the, this is all about. Eventually, I do see that Dwell is going to move into other areas. The business mountain, right? The education mountain, those are all super important. You know, Tim, uh, and if you guys have and, uh, found out for him, he was actually running to be uh, on the Board of Regents, right? That's State Board of Education. State Board of Education, I'm sorry. I keep getting those mixed up. John Maxwell was yeah, yeah. Regents, right? Okay, so, but that's, the attempt, Tim was trying to get into the education mountain, all right? right. And we, by the grace of God, next time, yeah. right? We're going to pray you in, Tim. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Okay? Amen. So that's, all right, that's what we're all about, though, okay? And then on and on. So, um, just, you know, quick uh, uh, office stuff. The Connect card, I think I handed them out already. Uh, this is for us to keep uh, in touch with one another. And then, for those of you uh, that understand what ties and offerings are all about, uh, we do take checks, just write it out to Dwell AGC. Those, uh, there's envelopes on the offering boxes. There's two of them. There's one in the pantry on your way in and out, and there's one kind of on the wall over there. Uh, we also do take uh, electronic deposits. We use Zelle. Just look up Dwell AGC at gmail.com. All right, and we are a fully accredited 501c3 so yes your and for donations. those who uh, for those who have uh, tithed or uh, donated we thank you because of your uh, offering we were able to do events and outreach uh, so we thank you for That's being right. god's channel for us to do those events amen amen, amen. okay and uh let's see so certainly being together on saturdays is wonderful it's just how do we keep in touch with one another during the week? And that's why we have this thing, uh, this WhatsApp uh, community. Thank you, uh, Janice, for already signing up. We saw you there. And you'll notice there's, there's different um, groups within our community. So there's this thing called Public Square. That's basically kind of our Craigslist for the church. You know, so basically everything goes on there if you want. There's a devotionals page for people that just want to do more kind of... Uh, encouragement or you know bible verses that kind of thing uh and then uh, there's a couple of other more functional things like you know there's a leadership thing there's a, a worship team thing and uh, so on okay but please join the community and that way we can, you know keep in touch with each other during the week as well okay and then as part of this community building it is very difficult to have community when you don't know the name of the person you're with so mm -hmm. i do this thing called the name game and basically, it's very simple. You basically start out with your name, and then you answer the question. So everybody's going to participate, all right? Now with that, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. we have about 15, 16 people tonight. Wow, that's great. Um, with that, you can't take your full two minutes, otherwise we'll be here for a long time, okay? So just please, in one sentence, just answer the question, okay? One sentence, Jim, one sentence, okay? Okay, so. <laughs> Um, we're going to use this mic. We're going to pass it around. Okay, honey, you want to start? Sure. I'm going to go this way. My name is Nina. I'm most thankful to God that I'm saved. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I'm thankful too. <laughs> There's too many things. I'm Heidi. Good. Um, but I am very grateful to have been born in America and that America will be saved and that the Lord helped us elect President Trump twice. Very good. Thank you, Eddie. Jim Lee, and the most thankful is that I believe God 
is still in control <coughs> everywhere all the time. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh, let's go to Tom. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. It is on. Yep. <coughs> My name is Tony. Um, I thank God for um, let me um, let me come to this uh, to the this country and have a chance to know you. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm Susan Crusoe-Bon, and I'm thankful to God that so great and marvelous are his works, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Susan. I'm Monica Larson, and I'm most grateful for God's salvation for me. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm Melanie, and I'm most thankful. There's a lot of things to be thankful for, as you well said, but the most is Jesus complete work on the cross. Wonderful. Let's go to the back if we can. Oh. Yeah. Maybe hand it off to your husband there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. There uh-huh. we go. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, Patrick, I'm just thankful for his, his mercy, his grace that allows me to be me as I go through my journey. Wonderful. Harold, and I'm thankful that, uh, that he didn't give up on me and for the new life he's given me. Thank you. Mom, Mom Dorothy, what are you most thankful for? Oh, hoping to get well. Okay. She said, hoping, hoping to get well. Yes. Ah, nice. yes. I pray over her. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I'm Angie Sheets. Um, most thankful to God for his son, Jesus Christ. And yes, for salvation and life and breath. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Tim Underwood, <clears throat> I'm most thankful for this week that for the clear win in the federal election and the direction the country seems to be going. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Amen. And then we'll go over here. Hi, my name is Keith Kim. Uh, I'm most thankful for my family, my wife Janice, and my four kids. Wonderful. Hi, I'm Janice, and I'm most thankful because I believe that God is waking up the world. Yes. And I want to make America repent again. Yes. yes, very good. Thank you. And finally, I'm Pastor Howell, and right now, the thing that I'm most thankful for is being alive in the most amazing time in all of history. You know what I mean? It is incredible to see what God is doing, that, you know, he's just proving himself over and over that he is definitely alive and well and active in everyday life. So, what a great time to be alive, right? Yeah, it's like, never a dull moment. (laughs) All right, thank you, guys. All right, so, um, now just quick, uh, it came to our understanding that... Nina and I have two very kind of different teaching styles, okay? Nina is very deep, okay? She's probably the most focused person I've ever met in my life, right? And when she goes, she goes like boom, super deep. And it's usually about the relationship that we have with God, okay? So she takes care of kind of, if you will, the vertical stuff. It's our personal relationship with God and our self-governance. It's the I, me, mine, child of God. Me, on the other hand, I'm more, I guess, of an extrovert, okay, if you will. And uh, I'm, when I teach, I t- tend to teach more about community, about, you know, how we relate to one another and that sort of thing. That's why I'm so interested in government and politics, because that's what it's all about, right? So, for me, when I teach, it's usually about the horizontal, and that is our relationship with others and community governance, we, us, ours, the Ecclesia, okay? But tonight, I get to teach, okay? <laughs> So, what I'm going to start with is, uh, we're going to pray, okay? So, Father God, I just thank you once again, Lord, for this opportunity to come together as your ecclesia. And I ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come now and just open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts to whatever you would have for us tonight. That, Lord, when we leave here, we will be different people. That you will have transformed us more and more into the likeness of your son, Jesus. Because that's what it's all about, Lord. We're not here to be entertained. 
We're not here uh, to get our bellies filled, although that's a nice side effect. But we're here, Lord, to become more and more like Jesus. So be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, again, we are celebrating what happened on Tuesday. Okay? Lots of amazing things happened, right? Not only did Trump win the White House, he is our, you know, president-elect. He won it in grand fashion. Landslide electoral college, landslide popular vote. Truly a mandate, okay, from the American people. It, it blows my mind. You know, I just think about four years ago, what happened there? You know, because I thought this should have happened four years ago, right? But in, in all God's wisdom and understanding, it didn't, okay? As a matter of fact, that's kind of what we're going to be talking about later, all right? But with that said, okay, these whole... People will say, you know, the church has nothing to do with politics. You should, you know, stay away from politics. The church is all about the gospel, right? That's it. But if you look, the idea of politics is in the Bible everywhere you look. In Proverbs 29.2, when the righteous are in authority, government, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, government, the people groan. So if, you know, if, if our faith has nothing to do with religion, why does he even talk about this stuff? Right? So we know this. And then Proverbs 29, 16. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. Wasn't well, this perfect? Because what did we see these last four years? Sin what? Flourished. It was all around us, you know, this transsexual stuff, and you know, the... I mean, just think of all the, the obscene things that even happened on the White House lawn. Mm -hmm. My Lord, right? But the godly lived to see... What did we just witness? Downfall. Their downfall. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Under God is so Praise good. God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right. And of course, what we're feeling right now, when the righteous triumph, there is great elation. But when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. Yeah. See? Literally. Yeah. Yeah. What happened during COVID? We all went into hiding. Right? So, anyways, this is just to show you that, yes, indeed, the Bible talks about government all the time. All the time. Okay. So now, I'm sure this is very familiar to everyone. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Yes. Yes. And, you know, for those of you that have been with us, we have been doing this for the past two years. Right? I mean, you know the song, right? We confess. The sins of our nation, and Lord, we are guilty of a prayer's lust. All right? He heard our prayers. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. It is, indeed. And one of the most miraculous ways he heard our prayers was to place Dr. Monica onto the city council yes. in Anderson. And let me just, yeah, let's yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. And I just want to say, because, uh, you know, I've actually been involved with city council races in the past. Uh, I was actually helping out a guy named Aaron Johnson. He was actually going for Ward 1, trying to replace, oh, I can't remember his name anymore. Uh, Siebel. Siebel, yeah. 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 But through that, I began to understand how corrupt our city council really was that they literally have a little cabal going. The only person on the city council that was actually of any integrity was Kerry Cox. Okay, and if you guys remember, we had Kerry Cox in here, well, what was it, two years ago or something? Praying for her. <clears throat> and that was a miracle how she got elected, you know? 
So now, though, unfortunately, the way the city council set up, right, there's basically five, right? And with just Carrie, the other four have their way all the time. And even if the mayor has to re recuse herself, they're still the three, and they can always push through an evil agenda, okay? And it has been truly uh, self, uh, it was all about putting money in their, in their own pockets mm -hmm. in the end, okay? So we as Henderson uh, residents, all our taxes have been subject to graft. You know, they've not been used well. So now with Dr. Monica in there and Carrie in there, they can put a stop to most of the graft. Okay, because now it will force them to go through a much more transparent process. I mean, they would literally have closed door meetings to make the decisions, and then they come out to the city council meeting for the public and just announce that they'd already made, made these decisions. No, no debates, you know, no questions. They just made, they just made it happen. All right. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. So with that, okay, I am so joy, full of joy, to. Uh, introduce to you Dr. Monica Larson, okay? And she's gonna just, well, bless us with her story because it's God's story as well. So here we go. I'll try and get through this without crying. Uh, it's, it has definitely been a journey. Um, we moved here two years ago from California from Pasadena. Um, when we got here, I thought, well, I'm just gonna lay back because I figured I was gonna retire. Mind my own business, but God had other plans. I'm trying. I don't have much in me. Oh, Sorry, thank you. I've been talking a lot uh, over these last nine months, but well, God had other plans. I never thought I would ever in a million years run for politics. I detested politics from what I had seen and how corrupt it really truly was. So God laid it on my heart. Run. For, uh, well, I'll tell you how it all started. Uh, we moved into our neighborhood. There was a lot of crime. I've worked in my police department in the past. Um, I started calling the police. We just had a terrible shortage of them. I started calling. Our, my former opponent, he never returned one phone call, not one. Um, we started having attempted break-ins, vehicle thefts, attempted child abductions, peeping toms, it was out of control. And so I started going door to door and I started talking to our neighbors because I, I like community. And I said, we've lost this sense of community, what's going on, we gotta know each other. And so I, I went door to door, and that's how I started Neighborhood Watch with the Henderson Police Department. And we're very strong, very active. But again, like I mentioned, I kept calling our councilman for help. Absolutely no response, not once. So I said, who is this guy? You know, he's supposed to represent us. So I started attending the city council meetings. Um, we were having speeders. In addition to that, um, our like everywhere else, this, the speed limit was 25 miles an hour. And these drivers, because they were cutting it through, and I know it's everywhere, but we're driving down our street in excess of 70 miles an hour oh. on average. And it was 1,880 cars in one day. So children playing outside was out of the question. Getting your mail was a hazard. Pulling out of your driveway was a hazard. So I started attending the city council meetings trying to get help. Um, he would not look at me. He would not acknowledge me. He ignored me. This went on for months. Absolutely. And he's supposed to represent us. So I had to get help from Councilwoman Carrie Cox. As Pastor mentioned, she's the only one with integrity. And she tried to intervene before, and he told her, absolutely not. This is my ward, mind your own business. Mm -hmm. And so I was contemplating, and I said, Lord, he put it on my heart to run. I said, if you really want me to run, and I was sitting in church at that time, you got to, like, put it on a billboard, whatever. you got to let me know. And the Lord was quite clear. 
And he said, you were created for a time such as this, like Esther. Do your part and I'll do the rest. So I said, that's all I needed. Lord, you said it and I'll do it. It's yes and amen because obedience is better than sacrifice. And you have to forgive me. Like I said, I've been talking so much, so Lord, help me. But um, when he told me to run, it was literally the last two days of filing. Everyone else had almost 18 months on me. And I said, if you told me to do it, Lord, you will equip me. You will put the people in my path. You will put the finances in my path. And he did that. There was always just enough. That's all I asked for, just enough. Mind you, my opponent, they put a third person in to split the votes. They'll do things like that. The enemy had such a stronghold over the city and the council. The developers put in $500,000 oh with my and my opponent's campaign to fight me in the primary. Wow. That alone should tell you something. Mm -hmm. It's a part-time position that pays 60000 so why would you put half a million dollars in? So, I kept praying, and, and so I said, Lord, give me wisdom, give me discernment, tell me what to, what to do. And God said, walk. Keep walking. Mind you, this ward covers all the way from the M all the way through Inspirata, Anthem, Seven Hills, Sunridge Heights, Horizon Ridge. I thought it was Gibson. It's actually past that to Mission Street. It's huge. There's uh, over 100,000 in this city, and that's our ward. And I walked, and my husband and I walked, and in the primary, that's when it was the 120 degree temperature, and we would walk 12, 14 hours a day. My husband walked on the weekends. I walked during the week. Initially, I was walking by myself, but at that time, I didn't have a lot. A lot of volunteers who would help me. So I just walked. Um, that stopped <laughs> when uh, the enemy was just throwing everything and anything he could at me. And I'm not even joking when I say this. Um, they would send things to my our home addressed to my opponent open. I just quickly videotaped and wrote on there, it does not reside here, and I put it right back in the mailbox. They would have people follow me. They would have people go behind me to every door and yank off our literature and throw it in the garbage. They had one time in Seven Hills a woman, I had no idea she was on that side. The enemy used her. She videotaped me putting my literature on the doors, on her door, and she put it on ring in next door and said, does anyone know this woman? She tried to break into my house and she stole a package. Mm -hmm. And she knew it was a lie. These kind of things happen after that. My, uh, my uh, campaign manager said, you're not allowed to walk anymore by yourself. And I said, well, Lord, you will equip me and bring me an army. Yeah. So people started volunteering and they started walking with me. Thank God. Um, I had one incident where, and like I said, and this was an anthem, this woman came up when my friend David and I were walking. She was possessed, and she, we literally had just gotten out of the car, and she came barreling at us and just started screaming and cursing us out. My friend David got freaked out. He ran behind me. <laughs> I said, she will, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then she walked around us and kept going. And I go, let's go, David. <laughs> David was freaked out the rest of the time. He kept looking over his shoulder. <laughs> but um, another time, this other man, David and I were walking again. He had went to walk around the block to get his car. I saw this man walking towards him. They actually exchanged hellos, and he started walking towards me while I was putting something on the door. And I had friends who were retired FBI, and they're like, be careful, Monica. These people, you're messing with their money. This, this is billions. Be careful. And, and you know, I kept it in the back of my mind, but I said, I have no fear. I got God. Amen. So that's Amen. all I got to kind of keep doing. 
keep doing what I'm supposed to do. I got the full armor protection and hedge of protection of God. Plus, my husband and I prayed over all the walk cards. Every time we would walk, pray, pray. Pray, God, to open their ears, remove the scales off their hearts, off their minds. Put my name on their lips and in their dreams, because God's going to break this up. And when Pastor Howe was saying, it is true evil, and I'll get into it. But this man, he, after my friend had passed and gone around the corner, he came straight towards me. Straight towards me. I turned around. He was standing right there. And I, I looked at him, and, I, and he goes, yeah, I thought so. I go, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> and then he turned around, and he kept going. But then my friend David had come with his car at that point. David drove past. He came around again, and I just said a prayer, and then he left. But... Um, the enemy was so, he knew what God wanted me to do, and this was my calling, what I was supposed to do. God created me for a time such as this. Every experience he's had me do in my lifetime was not in vain. It was a culmination to this point. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let me back. Oh, okay, so that was in the primary. I told you they had a third person. <coughs> God not only knocked that person out, because God has given me discernment, and I said, the very first time I saw that third opponent, I told my team, I said, his motivation isn't right. He, he's, with, he's in allegiance with the uh, opponent. And they said, no, you don't know what you're talking about. He's a local. I go, no, I know what I've seen in the spirit. He is in their camp. They didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. I said, God will reveal it. Within a month, oh, he revealed it. Mm -hmm. And I said, it wasn't to tell you. I told you so. It was to warn you, to protect you, and be very careful. But in the primary, June 11th, I think it's when it was, the, we had the race. Mind you, I was going and attending all the city council meetings, every single one, during this entire time. The council, which includes the mayor and the three men, plus Carrie, and Carrie's the only one with integrity, would mock me every time I went into those council chambers because they figured well, he has $500,000. There's just no way that she's gonna win this race. We've always locked this down. They've threatened people in the past. They've actually threatened them to bury their businesses, destroy their businesses, destroy them, destroy their families. But I had no fear because I had not. And I always spoke with authority every single time and would hold them accountable. They did not like that. I did not care because God gave me a boldness and he said, speak the truth. And I always did. So after the primary, the third person got knocked out. And then the opponent, how it works, if they get 51%, they win. Well, he didn't get 51%. And this was the first time in the city's history since 2003. They could not believe it. And they said, how could this happen? But God, <laughs> oh, but he had 500,000. I said, but God's unlimited. That's right. God will see this through. And because there was only two months, remember I was telling you, before the election, two months, and I said, look at what God did in two months and watch and see what he won't do in four. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't believe it. So these developers, unscrupulous developers, started pouring in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions. They started forming packs, hiding millions behind those packs to defeat me. Um, and I just kept trusting the Lord. Then they got even more vicious and more vile, because that's how the enemy works. Um, when Pastor talked about, and there was an individual, Wayne Root, talked about today, and it's true, um, censorship. And I started, God started showing me in the primary, I suspected it, but it was evident in, in the general. Um, censorship in the sense of um, there's no local newspaper that's strategic and purposeful because no information can get out. The news reporting agencies do not report on Henderson. They have to get permission from the mayor first. Wow. Then I found out, you should see the stuff God just kept showing and pouring and pouring. Two whistleblowers came forward who were going to the FBI. And they said, and it was a confirmation, 
they control also the Facebook group pages. They're the moderators. They control the next door app. It's city employees. <laughs> and I said, I thought I felt it in my spirit because in the primary, <clears throat> post things, delete, and local politics are allowed. When I moved to the general, I must have posted 600 things. They deleted every single one and left five. And I had to appeal those five twice. Yeah. Anyone else who posted on me, delete, blocked, or they banned them completely until they said after the election. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to take complete, the enemy was trying to use complete censorship and control because I said, Lord, how come people don't know what's going on? Like what he's revealed and, and, and revealed to me. And it was the censorship. And so in addition to that censorship, um, the mayor and the three men also voted. I found this out yesterday, Pastor, Pastor Nina or Pastor Al. They voted between the, between the four, uh, four of them, the mayor and the three men. The agenda items, which is supposed to be public to all, they voted between themselves to exclude certain things from the agenda. So the public will never know. That's against the law. It's against the law. This is what I mean. Pastor touched on it. The whistleblower is also, and it's not gossip, it's the truth that you need to know. They also, anything, any contracts over 100,000, they don't have to report. So family members, 98,000, 95,000, 96,000. We're paying for this. You have no idea. They have multiple consulting companies, LLCs, PACs, and foundations doing billions with the city. Not to mention all the streets and paving contracts go to a certain company that the mayor and the, the mayor's husband and son work for. And a month ago, they gave him a $173 million contract. God is a God of justice. You do not keep doing this when you're put in a position to be a public servant. It's a ministry. You don't serve yourself. You serve the public. And they've used this as their personal piggy bank, and they've gotten away with it for a very long time. One of the first, after the general, one of the first uh, four mailers that were sent out, really vicious and vile lies, slanderous lies. And it, it had the name of a pack. A pack is just something they'll create to hide money. I looked up that pack. We looked up the pack on the Secretary of State site. It was the former mayor. That's where it all started. I've never met the woman in my life. So she exposed herself, which is good because she exposed herself. At first I was so angry and I said, Lord, don't let bitterness in my heart. Don't let me let that unforgiveness in my heart keep me shielded. And I said, you saw what they did, Lord. Vindication is yours, your word says, and victory is mine. And then it shook me to my core because um, God said these words. And he said, look at what they did to Jesus. And that just stopped me. I go, they can do anything. And, you know, who am I? After You're right, Lord, after what they've done to Jesus. And I said, you're right. So that helped gird me up for what was coming next. And they, the enemy just kept hitting uh, all these lies about our, my family's finances because they not only tried to humiliate me, mind you, they put it in text, email, to the entire city, <coughs> to the entire city. And I used to model years ago. It's nothing new, but they dug up some of those pictures and they put it in the email and text messages too. I said, all right, Lord, I, I need some help here. I, and I knew God was with me. Melanie, a pastor, and pastor, uh, Neil, that time I came for fellowship, all I could do was cry. There was nothing else that would come out, literally. And um, they lifted my arms like Moses when you couldn't do anymore. You need somebody to lift up. And I thank you 
for that. My prayer warriors and supporters, because you guys encouraged me to keep going. As tough and heavy as it was, yeah, they humiliated me, but I just kept on because God said, stay the course. Stay focused. And my husband said something one day, and he goes, and it just resonated. He goes, you're a Trump of Henderson. I go, what? <laughs> from what was going on on a federal level was exactly what was going on on a local level. And I, I just had no idea, you know, I was like, oh Lord, what have I gotten into? Because now I knew why he had us come here. And so I kept staying the course. We kept walking, we kept walking, we kept walking. Um, they kept putting out, they had TV commercials, you know how expensive those are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mailers, they were popping out five, six, sometimes ten a week. Those mailers are 40000 a apiece. And they've been doing this for months. And I said, Lord, you'll provide. And each and every time, he provided, he provided, he provided, he provided, he provided. Then we have what they call C&E reports. That's from the Secretary of State. Anyone can look them up. It'll show you who's the contributors, who donates to you, and where your expenses are. So you can easily look those up. And so they're done on a quarterly basis. So they're always looking as soon as the next day and they're published to see who the donors were. So the mayor, after the last one, started calling the donors who donated to me and thank God for them. It was very few because she had already called every single one of them uh, in advance and literally told them because two of them came back and she threatened them. And she said, you will not, under any circumstances, donate to Dr. Monica Larson or Carrie Cox, or else we will reject every contract you try to get with the city. Wow. This is a mayor. It's, it's illegal. Yeah. It's illegal. <clears throat> they have run this as a criminal empire. Mm -hmm. And it's been going on for a very long time, and they thought it would never be broken. But God said, yes, it will. And so, whew, the election uh, was Tuesday, and I just had peace. You know, I kept working through Monday, all through, all through Monday, with my husband and I and our friend David. And we had a team, even the police came out on Saturday, and a group of us, we all worked, because the police endorsed me and everybody. And uh, we walked Friday, uh, Saturday, 12 hours, Sunday, 14 hours. Monday, uh, my friend David couldn't go, and my husband had to work. And, I, and God told me to walk these other two. These they were apartment buildings that we couldn't get in because they were gated communities. So, lo and behold, God had the gate was open. <laughs> I was like, like the 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 Red Sea was probably like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, Lord. And trust me, my legs felt like jello, and I said. And it was those kind of old fashioned with all those stairs. And, I, I, and it was a lot of them. I, and I just prayed, I go, Lord, give me the strength. I can do all things through you, Christ Jesus, who strengthens me. It was, it took me like five hours. <laughs> and I had to go up and down every single one of those stairs. And, but I knew I had to do it. And so God got me through it. And then the last one was, the same type of apartments in Seven Hills my friend lives in. And so I called her, I said, are you home? <laughs> and she's like, yes, just come and get me, let's go. And she's always ready to go. And so we did half of those. By then it was getting really cold and dark and God's like, you're done. And I said, okay, Lord, we're done. And um, the next morning, uh, oh, no, we were done walking. But um, what the policy is, you have to put out signs. And you have to put them a certain way because they will steal them. They put mustaches on almost every single one of my signs. They've taken box cutters to half of them. They've cut others down with wire cutters and literally stomped them. And so with these buckets, you have to put sand in them to prevent them from stealing them. And then you have to put yard signs and then you have to zip tie them a certain way to make sure they cannot take them. And you have to put them at every polling station. And you have to put them out at a certain time because if you don't, they'll steal them. 
because they want no visibility. So my husband and I, we went out at about midnight on Monday, I guess it would be Tuesday morning of voting. And midnight we finished at 4 a.m. And I had to get up and be there at the first polling station at 6.30. And so I just said, all right, Lord, Lord give me this chai tea latte and let it fuel me. <laughs> Let's go. And so I was excited because I said, God's going to show up and God's going to do a miracle. Amen. And watch him show up and show out. That it was unprecedented, and I knew it was going to be because of the presidential election. But there was lines like they had never seen before, and and because I was at every single one, there was lines like you had <coughs> never seen before. I'm like, praise you, God, praise you, God. And so I finished. I stopped at six o'clock uh, at the polling stations, and I had peace because I knew God didn't tell me to do this for no reason. I wouldn't have, this wouldn't have been in vain. Not only just like President Trump, it was a complete blowout. They called it. Last time in the, in the primary, they waited 10 whole days before they confirmed. In this one, they called it the next day. It was over a 13 point spread. Yeah, and, and, and they could not believe it. They literally are still in shock. My opponent has not call me. He won't. It's his character, unfortunately. And I pray for his salvation. I pray for all of them because I would be the first person on that council that's a Christian. That's why this is important. God has bigger things. In fact, there was a gentleman I ran into, and this is the second time in my life I've ever experienced this. Um, when God says you'll come across angels, I knew. I just knew when I saw him his skin was this rich, deep color I had I had only seen once before. And this was years ago when I first got saved. His eyes were just this piercing, almost gray. And he had flax hair that looked like wool. And I saw him, and just almost like he appeared out of nowhere in the parking lot. And I said, hello, I'm Dr. Monica Larson. Can I give you a flyer? Because <laughs> I was always campaigning. And he goes, <laughs> Your name is Monica Larson. I go, yes, yes it is, sir. And he goes, God wants you to keep going. Mm -hmm. He started prophesying in the middle of the parking lot. And he said, God wants you to keep going. God wants you to keep speaking the truth. No matter what people say and they don't like it, keep speaking the truth. God is with you. This is bigger than what you think. Mm -hmm. This is bigger. God has more. And he said, I will be at your inauguration. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so, despite all the vile, and I mean vile, they would come at me on social media saying the most vile, racist, evil things. They would insult my race, my intelligence. They forced me to take doctor off my title. Mm. Um, everything they could to try and erase me, that's what the enemy wanted. But I know who I am in Christ Jesus, and I knew what God had. And so this win isn't my win. This win is for all of us because this isn't just a ward issue. It's a city issue. And this win, God is going to eradicate this evil. He's already put it on my heart. I am going to run for mayor in two years. Yes. <laughs> Before you spoke that, I received that. Praise God. Right before Praise you spoke God. it. Praise God. She's going to be mayor. confirmation. She's going to be mayor. Praise God. And every day God's had someone speak it out loud. Yes. And it's Praise confirmation God. yesterday. It was two. Ooh, praise and God. And so this is the evil that I'm telling you about. I found out yesterday. Well, I found out beforehand. Remember how I said there's four council seats. So how they've been getting things through. All they needed were three votes, and they had it with the three men. So what they did in anticipation, they knew, they knew that I would win. They opened up the charter. The charter is something that hasn't been opened in 58 years. They did that two weeks ago or a month ago with the intent of appointment. It's always been a special election. 
appointing another council member. No, there's an individual who right now, a councilman who is not in great health, and they know it, and I'll tell you the story about that, and, um, but they know he's going to, he's going to have to leave. Right now, that's why they did that open charter with the intention of appointing another person that's as corrupt that's going to roll over like the others. There's no way. God will make sure. Carrie and I will be making a trip to Reno. We will be talking to the legis legislators, and God is going to shut that down so that there's a special election. There's someone who's already risen up that will win. Once this person gets on, the three of us have control of the city. It is no longer in control of corruption. We can fire anyone and everyone at that point. And I'm telling you, it's infested, infested with corruption. And it's all from the direction at the top, well, from the enemy, but at the top. Um, they have sabotage carry. I will not allow anybody to manage my calendar <coughs> or my emails. They forced Carrie to do that, or Carrie accepted it. No, because what they started doing was sabotaging. And they would put meetings on her, they would delete meetings or put meetings on her calendar 45 minutes after they were supposed to start. You know, and things like that, and deleting her emails or taking her mail, and she never knew she received it. And um, what Pastor Hall was saying too, they have done other things. There was a motel called a Motel 6 down by Water Street, somewhere by Water Street that was well known. It's been there for years. So what they'll do, what they did, they started sending out code enforcement to create all these fictitious code enforcement violations, which were false. And they gave a short timeline to respond. And he could because there was so many, he couldn't keep up. And he said, I can't keep up. I can't do this. They can do what they call eminent domain. Mm -hmm. The city took it. Mm -hmm. And they gave it to a developer friend because they wanted to bulldoze so that developer could build what they wanted because mm -hmm. their companies were profiting mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. It is pure evil. And God's going to stop it. Yes, yes. And so I'm so grateful because this is a huge responsibility. But God has given me the boldness, and he's going to equip me, and he's given me the discernment to navigate and know who and what to stay away from and align myself with. But the boldness and wisdom, I pray for wisdom, I pray for yes. wisdom, I pray for wisdom, to learn what I need to learn very quickly and to be proficient because in preparation for two years to run against her. She, Dan did not call me to concede the race because that's his character. Michelle had to call the next day. Now, mind you, Michelle had put out a flyer, email, text messages a week ago calling me a liar. Mm. I said, Lord, vindication is yours and victory is mine. Mm. She called me. I was gracious because I'm not going to. I have to be gracious. Despite how they act, I have to be an ambassador for Christ. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And so I was gracious. And she said, oh, I would love for you to come next week for your onboarding. I said, of course I can do that. My inauguration will be January 7th. Now look at how the enemy works. I haven't said anything to Carrie, and I'm not right now until God releases me. Look at how the enemy works, because if he could divide Michelle said to me, I also want you to be mayor pro tem. Mm -hmm. Mayor pro tem, Carrie was next in line for that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's an integrity. She knew exactly what she was trying to do. I let it write. I'm not going to say anything until she puts it in writing. And then it's going to be public that I call her out on it and say, as you're well aware, this is a seniority thing. I am not in line for this. I will when, when the time comes, but this is rightfully Carrie's. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're already trying mm -hmm. 
today I told Melanie and Pastor Nina and Pastor Shaw when I came home from a meeting today, because I do the neighborhood watch, I patrol myself throughout our neighborhood, I know which cars that belong there and which don't. I know who's parked on the wrong side of the street. If there is a vehicle there, this individual, when I drove by slowly, and I told you God has given me this boldness, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> and I drove by real slow, and I let him see me. We made eye contact while he was holding up his phone, videotaping oh. what looked like my house. Hmm. He saw me, I saw him. Mm -hmm. He turned very quickly on the street before me. I went around in order to catch him. He didn't come down this way. He went into the cul-de-sac <coughs> and parked. And I went right to the cul-de-sac. He saw me and he fled at like 60 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And I was right behind him. And, and he fled to the next subdevelopment. I was coming right behind him. He fled and went down via uh, Inspirata down towards Raiders Way, but I, I had caught him long enough to take a picture uh, of his car and his plates. Wow. So I called it in to the police to let him know, um, you know, I have neighborhood watch, you know, and I said, these are the plates, these are unusual plates, because it was, it's, I couldn't make out what the left, what, it wasn't numbers or anything, what the photo was, but it just said W806. Place that's too short for yeah, a place. Yeah, that's weird. And so I said, this is really weird. What is it? So police officer came. Mm -hmm. He looked it up and he said, he called him because he identified who it was, private investigator. Oh, no. And I said, well, good. He knows don't come in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and he stinks at his job because I spotted him. He's not very good at his job. But, you know, this is the kind of games that they play. But I know what God said and what God put in my heart. This cabal is going down. This evil is going to be uprooted. No more. Absolutely no more. And so if this is going on on a local level, I could just imagine better. Truly. And so get involved because God has called his army rise up and he's called his army to get into government. This is how we stop it because otherwise if you're apathetic, and I never, and I was one, I never paid attention to the local levels. I mean, I just didn't. And now I see God has really truly opened my eyes. We have to as Christians because otherwise we get what we got for the last four years and 12 years and 20 years. We have to stand up and pray, pray you know, for all the leaders because it is truly a battle. It is good versus evil. Mm -hmm. It's David and Goliath, mm -hmm. and it truly is. And it's greed, and it's power, and it's pure evil because if you have no Christians over the council who control the city and make up the laws and divvy up the funds that they're taking from you, the taxpayers, <coughs> you're in trouble. How do you tell police and fire you don't have funds for them, yet two months later you're spending $70 million on a sports facility that's private? I don't know about you, I don't know any private company that could go to a city and say, hey, can you spot me $70 million? Or $32 million for a parking lot, nothing's happened on it for two years. Or, like I said, $173 million, and that's just one, paving contract for Bowler Highway when nothing needed to be done other than build pedestrian bridges for people to safely go over. But they only gave that contract because the, mayor and the, hus the mayor's husband and son worked there. Wow. This is the kind of stuff, yes, we feel it on a federal level, but we most certainly feel it on a local level because that's where all the decisions are made. So get involved, learn, um, go to your city council meetings because that was another part of censorship. Those meetings were held at 3.30 in the afternoon on the first and third Tuesday of every month. They knew people were working or picking up their kids. Mm -hmm. Those meetings were literally over in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. They didn't even discuss every item. And again, remember, they withhold, withheld items from the agenda. So they would 
put what they wanted the public to see, and usually it was like 60 to 80 items. They would group them all together, not even discuss them, and say items one through 80. Everybody mm -hmm. in favor, say aye. Mm -hmm. Stamp. It was rubber stamp. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know what was going on, so that's why you wouldn't know what was being <coughs> built in your neighborhood or where your taxpayer dollars were going. For instance, we had something that all of a sudden popped up. I said, what is that? It was marijuana dispensary, 24 hours, mm -hmm. right across from a school. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yes. The children have to walk past it every day. I said, why would you do something like this? Hmm. Money, greed, corrupted children. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, well, the ordinance says it has to be 1,000 feet. Well, it was literally like 1,010. Why would you do that? So this is a battle. This is a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. They will do anything that they want. And like President Trump said, fight, fight, fight. Amen. And that's, that's what I'm doing. So just please get involved in your local politics. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Monica, come back here because we're going to pray for you now, yes, okay? Yes. So everyone, let's gather around, all right? Uh, ladies, put the head in, lay hands on her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, we're going to do this uh, popcorn style, which means that if the Holy Spirit is leading, you go right on ahead and pray whatever's on your heart. Uh, and then in about uh, 10 minutes or so, I will bring us to a close. But I will start by saying, uh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this warrior that you yes. put here yes. for such a time as this. Yes. That indeed, Lord, um, <laughs> she is the perfect person yes. for this spot. And that you've chosen her, Lord, to be, well, the Trump of Henderson. That's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so good. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, now we just ask for your protection, yes, yeah. and for your blessings, yes. and for your favor to be upon her. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just lift up your daughter here, Lord God. First, Lord God, thank you so much, Father, Lord, for placing your people in the front line, God. And, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, restore her peace, her joy, her energy, God. Yes. For she has been a faithful servant and friend to you, Lord. Tired and weary, but pressed forward, O oh God. And here she stands for you, King, to carry out the righteous will of you, God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, no weapon formed against her will prosper. She will condemn every tongue that accuses her. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and our righteousness of him, saith the Lord. And she has been given authority to trample serpents and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall harm her. It is written. The devil will try, but nothing shall harm her. And Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you cover her in your blood every second of every hour. Her and her family, everybody associated with her, her co-workers, everybody that is on her side, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that every time she even leaves her house or wherever, wherever she goes, God, you disarm and dismantle every demonic spirit that is trying to use a person to attack her. We rebuke it. Yes. And we bind it in the name of Jesus Christ right now. And whatever is bound here is bound in heaven. So that when she walks, Lord, they will fall to their knees to you. Lord. They will bow their knees to you, Jesus Christ, these demonic forces. In her presence, because of her authority in you, Lord God. Father, give our sister wisdom. Give her wisdom for all the things she needs to know. Download it in her, God. For the sake of time, Father God. For the things she doesn't understand, Father, let her understand them. Whatever she didn't have experience in God, just let her just know it. Father, for she has your mind, Jesus Christ. She has your heart, Jesus Christ. And it was by her heart, Lord, that you chose her. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we bless your holy name. And Lord, we ask that you part it like the Red Sea, her path. Make it seamless. Remove the obstacles, Lord, and the hindrances. It shall be smooth because she is carrying out your will and your, her obedience to you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In agreement. Amen. 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 Right here, I impart. I impart this intimacy with the Lord. So because we're not fighting flesh and blood. So, Lord, we just ask you 
to keep her with you. Especially in the future, she's going to be very busy. But Lord, we just pray that you will help her not to lose her first love. That every morning, she will rise and seek your face. Seek your face first. Type her time so that the enemy cannot rob her time or have a um, premature fruit cast on the ground or have the enemy steal her fruit so that, um, that her time is well protected and all her work is well protected. Lord, help Monica to help, help Monica to always look at you first. Focus her heart and her eyes on you and always uh, seek her face first and play without ceasing and fight the spiritual war first before dealing with the flesh and blood. And Lord would also um, ask you to continue to keep her heart tender, tender and have the heart of Jesus to pray that, Lord, you forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. To bless her enemy and love the one who persecute her and pray for their salvation. Wouldn't it be so wonderful that everybody who come in contact with Monica will be saved? And we just prophesy that. That she will be the light and the salt. That she will allow Christ live through her and abiding Christ and the Lord abiding, abiding her and everything she does is Christ doing it through her and that, um, that she has no fear because she's always clinging on you. Lord, you already said you shall never forsake us nor, nor leave us. You are, you are always with us. You're not the problem, Lord. We are the problem. Yes. So Lord, we just ask you to keep Monica to be with you. Yes. And do not let the enemy distract her in any way. Yes. Keep her firmly rooted yes. in you. Every day, every moment. In Jesus' name, we bless her. Amen. 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 Father God, I thank you so much for Dr. Kalarsen, Lord, thank you for her bravery and her courage yes. to stand up for what is right. Yes. Father God, I pray that you will put the full armor of God yes. on her, Lord. The helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shield of faith. But most of all, I pray that she will have the sword of the Spirit. Father God, I pray that you will bless her. Bless her abundantly and put a shield of protection around her, Father God. Thank you for her feet, Lord. That she has walked thousands of miles, door to door, knocking. And you have told us that when we seek and we knock, you will be there, opening the door for us. Father God, I thank you so much for this public servant, Father God, who obeys you and is prompted by the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will fill her, fill her with the Holy Spirit, Father God. Today, I pray that you will just be with her all the days of her life. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the scornful, nor sitteth in the seat of the, of the ungodly, but uh, of sinners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Thank you so much for your words, Lord. And I thank you for this ecclesia, Lord. Yes. This group of people who have put their hands on her, your public servant, to do your work. Make her a clean vessel, Father God. Help her to just renew her mind every day with your word. I thank you for this group, and I thank you for her. I pray all these things in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you you've called Monica to set fire to the city of Henderson yes. to consume its corruption with the power of your Holy Spirit and your angels. And in that gratitude, <clears throat> we ask that you bless and anoint her with the power, the love, the humility, the speaking, the love and truth <clears throat> with all things that she needs to fulfill her mission. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you so much.
so much for using Monica for your purposes to clean house in the city council. Henderson, Lord, we pray for righteous allies to come to her aid to facilitate them, uh, to make her duties, uh, for to multiply her efforts in that uh, in that office, Lord. Uh, loyal, righteous, uh, God-fearing people, Lord. Uh, Lord, we uh, we pray that any tactics from the from the ungodly wicked people that are conspiring against her, Lord, for them all to fail and to come around, come back to like a boomerang and hit hit them. But, uh, and Lord, we just uh, we just pray that um, we just protect her, we protect her household, we put a mighty hedge of protection around her and her family, Lord. And um, and we just uh, just pray that every step that she takes along the way is one step towards that uh, ultimate um, goal of becoming mayor of Henderson. Yes, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all, all that you're, you've done and are doing through Monica. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What what a beautiful testimony tonight and we have seen you raised up a chump as a fighter and you also lift up Dr. Monica as a fighter too in Henderson you exposed how corrupt this government is just like a third world country like this but it's time you lift up you raise and Dr. Monica to fight, yes. to clean up, yes. to take the country, yes. take the city back, yes. to the people, yes. we the people. Yes. And we thank you, Dr. Monica. <coughs> she is a modern times daily. Mm -hmm. Face to the Ghana is so corrupt, so strongholder, and those evil have been corrupt controls this city for so long. And you were absolutely with her again and assign a mission to her. Yes. And she gonna accomplish it. With your help, with your strength, with your protection and your mercy. And we we Christians, we churches, we shall stand behind you. We will back up you. Jesus, we will see your glorify will be shining upon angels in city mm -hmm. in Las Vegas yes. and for the future yes. of America. Yes. Thank you. We ask for Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We bless Dr. Monica. Blessing and honor um, to be on her favor, on her, Lord, that you continue to cover her. Thank you, Lord, for your calling on her, Lord. Um, Lord, that you promised that those that are faithful with little uh, will steward much, that you'll trust her with more. Lord, and that you have made her uh, uh, an Esther, Lord, that she would be contagious, Lord, that others would catch yes. the courage, Lord, to, to stand up in their calling just like her, Lord, that she would just um, hide her, um, hidden in your armor, hidden in your, in, inside you, Christ Jesus, that she's hidden in Christ, even to her enemies, that they would be confused, they would be confused, not remembering who they're after or what their purpose was, but they would fall before her, in Jesus' name, and just surround her, Lord, and we bless her. Our God inhabits, our God inhabits the praises of his people, and my works, saith the Lord, shall be accomplished in an atmosphere of praise. Oh, hallelujah. Korea data moshangirasi here. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving yes. and honor yes. and power yes. and might yes. be unto our God 
forever and ever, and ever and ever. Amen. May all good things come to pass. In Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. every day, every second of every hour, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So Father, we just uh, lift Dr. Monica up to you. Thank you again, Lord, for how you've provided for her and that you have given her the victory to have this seat. But now, Lord, the work has just begun. And now, Father, we just pray that uh, you would continue to be with her and that she would know that you are with her as you have promised every step of the way. So be her strength. Be her shield and her buckler. Be her glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So, uh, yeah, at this point, uh, I actually did have a little bit more. <laughs> so, uh, I just, I'm just i just going to go through this really quick. And then, yes, I do want to have uh, some prayer time because I, I also want to pray for uh, uh, Tim as well. I'm going to pray for Dorothy and whoever else has any kind of physical uh, ailment because we're called to pray for the sick. Yes. You know, that is one of, the, one of the promises that Jesus made is that we will be sick. You know, healthy. Yeah. That's why the stripes, that's why he did it, right? So, anyways, I just want to read from Isaiah here, 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my, your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? And then, we know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. We know all these things, right? So this is what I wanted to present, just really quickly, okay? Because again, when, in 2020, I was so disappointed that Trump did not win. And I was like, God, why? You know, did evil <coughs> overtake? Did, did we not do our job? What's going on? And... You know, lately though, the Lord has been really just downloading that, you know, this had to happen exactly this way for what we are currently experiencing to come to pass. Mm. Because think of this, if Trump had won in 2020, he would have actually faced a democratic controlled Congress. It would have been complete stalemate, right? Because he would want to do his things, but it would just it would get bogged down in the House or get bogged down in the Senate, right? And of course, there would be more impeachments because I they would, you know they're not going to stop. They tried it twice; they would just keep going, right? The mega movement would have become stifled because again, it's all about nothing is happening, so people would lose interest, right? Uh, rhinos would still be in charge of the National Re uh, Republican. A committee, yes. you know. Think, remember Rhoda McDaniel? Yes. She's gone. Yes. If Trump had won in 2020, she would have, by all means, stayed there. Yes. So think about that, right? And there would have been this complacency in the population, yes. Yes. because to be honest, Trump would have done what he would do. We would have still had record low inflation. We would have had record low prices. You know, things would have been good, which means that people would be. Complacent. They would have been, you know, yeah. content. Yeah. They would be like, so what? Things are good. We're yeah. fine. Yeah. All right? So that's what would happen. These people would still be Democrats. Yeah. Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. She was the co-chair of the Democratic Party. Right? right? Yeah. RFK Jr. He'd still be a Democrat. Right? Yeah. 
Nicole Shanahan, well, that was RFK's running partner, right? Elon Musk, he was a Democrat. He voted, you know, for the Democratic, uh, he voted for Biden. Wow. <laughs> right? So, you know, remember why Elon came over was because they started to attack him. Yeah. When he bought X, he's like, what is this? What's going on? Right? right? If Trump would have won, he would have never attacked Elon. Mm -hmm. Right? So Elon would have just, he would have stayed where he was. Yeah. Right? Jordan Peterson. Right? I'm a big Jordan Peterson fan. He, he would have probably just stayed, you know, kind of on the left side of things because there'd be nothing pressing. Right? Russell Brand. You know, what an amazing guy, right? And his whole journey, you could track it because of the suffering he went through, yeah. right? If Trump were still in charge, yeah. maybe it would not have been a big deal, yeah. right? So, uh, Joe Rogan, Yay! <laughs> right? He would have stayed, a, you know, he would have stayed a progressive, yeah. or been nothing, right? Um, we would not have seen the depth of the corruption of the FBI, the CIA, FEMA, you know, uh, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Justice, CDC, the FDA, the IRS, you know, and all the other three letter agencies. Yeah. It would have stayed hidden. Mm -hmm. You know, because when Trump's in charge, things are fine, you know, right. whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. These people would not have exposed themselves as globalists, mm -hmm. right? Who knew, Mom? Mike Pompeo? I was like, Mike's a good guy, right? Yeah. No. Who knew, right? Of course, Mike Pence, right? If Trump would have won, Pence would have never outed himself as a traitor, right? Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell, you know, the House and the Senate leaders. Yeah. So think. These are all the things that happened because he lost, right? The mainstream media would still have some credibility, right? And Baron Trump wouldn't have been old enough to impact the election. Did you know the reason why he was on uh, uh, Joe Rogan? Baron. Baron, Baron. Yeah, Baron, the reason why Trump decided to do the podcasts was because his son Baron told him to do it. Really? Yes. That's what I heard. That's why. That's why it was so, such a genius move. And nobody would have seen that. And four years ago, he would have been 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't have been thinking about these kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. So God's timing is perfect. Always, always. It's amazing to me, okay? So, what are we supposed to go? Where do we go from here? All right, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. You all know this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay? This is still our mandate. But remember, it's to make disciples, not to make converts. You hear what I'm saying? You know, when people go and preach the gospel, they kind of think, okay, they said the sinner's prayer, they got dunked. I'm done. He's in. I'm going to move on to my next guy. No. That's making a convert. Mm -hmm. And they probably will just backpedal after a while because there's nothing, there's no foundation. There is no deep roots. Mm -hmm. We're in charge of making sure they get grounded. Yes. Okay? And they become true followers of Christ. And notice, did you ever notice the word nations there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So it is about the nations. Nations imply government. So we're supposed to impact the governments in order to make disciples of those nations, right? And how do we do that? We elect godly people to be in place, right? And we teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Well, that's obvious, right? But that means we need to follow those commandments first, right? So this is where we're going next. This is what we have to do. Great. We won the election. The job has just begun. Okay? All right. Remember, John Quincy Adams said, duty is ours, results are God's. Okay, even though we had a beautiful result, we still have our duty. Okay, so let's not forget. So, with that said, uh, let me read this really quick. Um, for those of you that remember her voice movement, they're the ones that are doing Don't Mess With Our Kids. And I got a very important message from them today. 
it is of the utmost importance. <coughs> Sorry, it's slow coming up. Okay, here we go. Of course, I just lost it. Sorry, there it is. Okay. Please pray. Urgent prayer alert. A bomb threat was reported at the Orange County Election Counting Center on Friday night. This is California. In Orange County, California, <coughs> where, there, where the threat was called in late, last night, election workers are still counting over 350,000 ballots for three open seats. These are very important because this is, determines the balance of power in the House of Representatives. The races for California's 45th, 47th, and 49th districts are razor thin. As the counting is still ongoing, the potential for the Democrats to steal these seats is real and more likely as the days drag on. Trump will be the next president, but Democrats want control of the House to block the mandate Americans gave us on Election Day. U.S. House seat races are still being counted across the nation, and there are concerns about election integrity being raised. There are reports of the employees duplicating ballots and filling them out themselves, no signature matching being observed, the volunteers primarily being liberal women, and no filming being allowed to observe and record the process. <sighs> it's also being said that they're accepting ballots <clears throat> with questionable signatures for more liberal counties, but rejecting questionable signatures for more conservative counties. <sighs> the Democrats have also sent staff and volunteers from Washington, D.C., to Orange County. Orange County is home to three races crucial to clinch the House, which is why the DCCC is flying out volunteers to process ballots. Hmm. Why is it that the Democrats always get to count? We're outnumbered in the natural, which is why it's so important that we pray. Okay? So here is the prayer. Let's all pray it together. Okay? Lord Jesus, we thank you for sending your angelic hosts to secure the perimeters in the natural and in the spiritual realm. We plead the blood of Jesus and we declare all schemes and ploys of the enemy to be canceled, null and void. Orange County belongs to Jesus and the people's votes will be respected, counted, and carry authority for action in the land. We say... All the leftist shenanigans are exposed and stopped in their tracks. We pray for media coverage to blow the whistle and make it known what is being done in hiddenness will be exposed by the light. Angelic hosts sent from heaven on assignment to Orange County, we say proceed on your mission. Let righteousness, justice, and holiness rule in our land and over the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for a wonderful evening. Thank you for sticking it out in the extra 17 minutes. Uh, and at this point, uh, again, uh, we do want to continue to pray for people that need healing. So Dorothy, Tim, uh, and whoever else that wants to. Otherwise, thank you for coming. Look forward to seeing you next week. And please join our WhatsApp group so we can stay in touch. Okay? So, good night, everyone. Love you. Bye.